Antiepileptic agents can be complicated to memorize and study because of their different mechanism of actions and side effects. But here we will simplify them in 7 minutes or less. First, what is epilepsy? Well, it's a neurological disorder characterized by recurring seizures that happens because of an abnormal electrical activity. Before talking about the pathophysiology, let's talk about the categories of seizures. We have focal or generalized seizures based on where will it start in the brain. Focal is the seizure that affects one area of the brain while generalized starts over both sides or starts as focal then becomes generalized. Sign and symptoms depends on the seizure types and location. In focal seizure, patient will experience alteration in motor function that includes jerking and twitching in one side of the body and sensory symptoms like tingling and numbness. In generalized seizures, motor symptoms will be bilateral and associated with loss of consciousness. Also, it might proceed with an aura symptoms. Generalized seizures can come in the form of an absence seizure, which is a sudden interruption of an ongoing activity or described as a blank stare. So what can cause a seizure? Well, it's either genetics or by an injury to the brain, stroke or brain tumors. Now let's dig deep in the pathophysiology. Seizure attacks happen when there is an imbalance between the excitation and the inhibition in the brain. What do we mean by that? Well, we have two types of neurons that counteract each other. Glutamate, which represent the excitatory neurons, and GABA, which represent the inhibitory neurons. In order to understand how a seizure happened, let's follow what happened during an action potential or an impulse. First, an influx of sodium and calcium will start through the ion channel. This will lead to the release of glutamate from the vesicles in the presynaptic terminal. Now, glutamate will then bind to its receptors in the postsynaptic neurons. It will bind into the AMPA and the NMDA receptors. This will trigger the action potential, meaning it will stimulate the neurons, and if this happens too much, it will trigger a seizure. Now, the GABA neurotransmitters are released into the synaptic cleft and bind to its own receptors on the postsynaptic neurons, which are the GABA-A receptors. This will have an opposite effect to the glutamate and it will reduce the chances of an action potential. After that, GABA is quickly removed and taken back to get catabolized by the enzyme GABA transaminase. Therefore, drugs that treat epilepsy can be divided into three types according to their mechanism of action. First, we have drugs that modulate the voltage-gated ion channels. These drugs will target the sodium and calcium channels and tries to inhibit them. Second group are drugs that enhance the synaptic inhibition. They will cause an increase in GABA activity, enhance its release, and prevent its degradation. Third drug groups stop the synaptic excitement and decrease the glutamate activity. Now let's talk about the medications subcategorized based on their mechanism of action. First, we have sodium channel blockers, which include phenytoin and phosphenytoin and their side effects can be gingival hyperplasia and hirsutism. Second, we have carbamazepine that has a black box warning of skin reaction, especially with patients that has the HLA-B1502 allyl, they will have a greater risk of Steven Johnson syndrome. Third, we have oxycarbazepine that may cause hyponatremia. And fourth, we have the lacosamide and rufinamide. They both cause cardiac side effects. The first is a slow sodium channel blocker, so as a side effect it will cause a prolonged PR interval. And the second is a fast sodium channel blocker, so it will shorten the QT. Second group are the calcium channel blockers, which include ethosuximide that can cause weight loss and blood discrasis. Second, we have gabapentin and pregabalin that also enhances GABA action. They can cause peripheral edema and weight gain. Third group are the agents that blocks both sodium and calcium channels. We have lamotrigine that can cause serious skin reaction, including Steven Johnson syndrome, and valboric acid that has a black box warning of causing hepatotoxicity and pancreatitis. Then we have topiramate that also antagonizes glutamate receptors. Side effects can be cognitive impairment and renal stones. Now the fourth group are the GABA receptors enhancers. First, we have benzodiazepines that can cause somnolence and ataxia, and phenobarbital that can also cause somnolence, hyperactivity, 
and bone demineralization. Third, we have the Vigabatrin that has a black box warning on causing permanent vision loss. Now we have other mechanism of actions. For example, the liver triacetam that binds to the synaptic viscous protein SV2A in the brain, reducing the rate of viscous release. Other side effects include psychotic symptoms and suicidal ideation. And last but not least, we have the fulbamate, which is an MDA antagonist, thereby decreasing the glutamate activity. It has a black box warning on causing hepatotoxicity and aplastic anemia. So how to select the appropriate choice of medication? Well, drug selection actually depends on the seizure type, comorbidities, adverse effects, and patient characteristics and preferences. Using antiepileptics has its concerns, including bone disorders with long use, drug interactions, especially with contraceptives, and CNS depressions, since all of them have to cross the blood-brain barrier in order to prevent seizures. And more importantly, several of the older antiepileptics like clonazepam, phenobarbital, phenytoin, carbamazepine, and valvoric acids are considered to be teratogenic. Now that's it for antiepileptics. You can check our website for more information and visual aids to make this further easier for you. Thank you for watching and good luck!